<laughs> okay, so let's go on. Uh, section nine. Limit theorems. Okay, so the previous section uh, was the stuff that you know how to how to prove limits with your bare hands. Right, it was sort of like getting your hands dirty to prove the limits. Now, what we're going to do is introduce introduce a bunch of tools that sort of um, allow you to uh, keep your hands clean. Okay, so you don't have to. It allows you to avoid. Um, doing this uh, epsilon n argument stuff. Okay, so um, uh, okay, I guess there's enough time to prove the first theorem. So the first theorem goes like this: a sub n converges. If a sub n converges, then um, it is a is a bounded sequence. In other words, there exists an M that traps all values of A sub N. Okay. So bounded means that there is some M and your sequence is trapped between between those, between m and positive and negative m. Right? That the absolute value of the sequence is, is smaller than m. And right? you're trapped between m and its negative. Okay, so that's what a, what a bounded sequence means. Okay, and this is saying that if you converge, then you're bounded. Okay, now this sort of makes sense, right? Because if you converge, um, if you so the picture, right, is you know if you converge to some value l. Right? Then the majority of your terms, right, all but finitely many of your terms are going to be close to L. Right? And then there's only finitely many other terms, but those guys, there are only finitely many of them, so you can deal with them. Yeah. So the finitely many terms don't have to be bounded between them and negative them. They do. They do. But we will create, um, so, these, so there will be these other guys, you know, who knows. But we're gonna you're gonna create an M that captures those guys as well as those guys. Yeah. Could you have a scenario where it's bounded at the top but not at the bottom? And so doesn't that create a problem? Not if there's only finitely many guys. They would be bounded above and below. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But also don't N have to be integers? Right? You can't plug in a real into that's true. Humans. That's true. Yeah. So then one of the axes can't be, right? On, on the uh, x-axis, all the all the elements are going to be a certain n, right? Yeah, yeah, so you've got your times, right? Time yeah. one, time two, time three, time four, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, so, right, so you say, okay, um, these guys are converging to L, so I know that I can make everybody close to L. And then before that, past the time, everybody's close to L. Before that time, there's only finally many of them. So there's a maximum value and there's a minimum value. Right? So these guys are bounded. Right? And then these guys are bounded because they're close to L. And so you put that together and you say that the whole sequence is bounded. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, let me give the proof. Um, uh, a n converges to some value L Z. Okay. Um, now take an epsilon of one. We know there's an n such that if you pass that n, um, a n minus L is smaller than one. The distance from L is smaller than one. So here's L plus one and L minus one. We know that past some point, everybody is between these two lines, the L plus one and L minus one line. Okay. Um, 
notice then that um, the absolute value of a plus n um, uh, by the triangle inequality is smaller than is smaller than this. Right. The absolute value of a plus n, <coughs> which equals this, is smaller than the distance from a sub n to l plus the absolute value of l. Right. And so that's smaller than absolute value of l plus 1, because right? this thing is smaller than 1. Okay. Okay. So what we see is that this number controls everybody past that n. Right? This number controls everybody past that n. We only have to deal with the guys before n. So now let m not be the max of the absolute value of a1, the absolute value of a2, up to the absolute value of a n. Okay, let's, let's add one. Okay. And let, um, let m be the max of l plus 1 and this m naught. Then uh, a sub n in absolute value is smaller than this m right, for for all n, right? Because uh, m is bigger than the maxes of of the finitely many guys, and m is bigger than or equal to you know it's it's, it's is bigger than or equal to this l plus one, which control the infinitely many guys. So, right. so the sequence, so a sub n is not. So we're just putting in in you know language what we said over here. Right. These guys are bounded. The finally many guys are bounded. For that like, first thing where you say let like, m not equal the maximum, what happens if the maximum in that sequence isn't equal? These are all finally, these are all finite values. Right? They all have to be finite. Yeah, but you've got a sequence. You, your sequence doesn't go one infinity. But couldn't you have a sequence where it's like sequence is one over uh, n minus one, for example? And then when n equals one, then it's. When we, when we say a sequence, we mean a sequence of real numbers. We don't mean a sequence that allows an extended real number. Oh, not extended. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's it for today. Um